Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we got here to Route 111, north of Mauville City, after visiting Verdant Turf Town and getting ourselves a new HM. In this episode, we are going to be challenging the Winstraight family here on Route 111. I take it you're a traveler. How's this? What do you say to taking on our family in a series of Pokemon battles? You bet, the spirit I like you. We didn't really have too many battles last episode, so I hope this will make up for it. Because I haven't been having too many battles, uh... Well, actually, no, I had a lot of battles last video. I mean, uh, two videos ago, because, heck, I took on all a cycling road, and I would have taken on... I would have shown me taking on the route to Verdant Turf Town, though, but I... Accidentally lost the recording of that, and just great, I... Well, actually, no, this isn't too bad, though, because I can just use Fake Out, and then what I can do is... Hope to... God, that I move faster, because I'm six levels higher. I don't. Oh, Quick Attack, okay, never mind. And just follow up with an Ice Beam. I probably just could have used Ice Beam to start off, though, but didn't really need to. Ice Beam is awesome. It is one of my favorite attacks. Kind of a shame it doesn't get the same type of attack bonus, like I said, though, but hey. We're gonna have ten, uh, we're gonna have a cool tent, have the experience share throughout all these battles, though, so it'll get at least some experience throughout them. And there we go. Zigzagoon, I am not worried about that in the slightest. We're just gonna use Double Kick, and that should be the end of... We're gonna use Single Kick, and that should be the end of that. I know there was Double Kick, and then later there was Triple Kick, though, but that's more like Single Kick. Alright, so that does it. Ay uh, What is he, the uncle from Jackie Chan? <laughs> okay. I don't know why, it just always sounds funny to me whenever old people are just like, ay yeah, because I always think of him. Oh my goodness, aren't you young? You must be quite the trainer to beat my husband, though. It's my turn to paddle now. You know, the Winstraight family kind of reminds me of this thing that I saw in the Guinness Book of World Records video game edition. There was this family where the kids and the parents all qualified for uh, finals in, uh, or uh, I think it was like regional championships in like for Pokemon in various tournaments. And I just gotta say, my God, do I wish my family was that cool. My family is really not anywhere near that cool though because heck, my whole dad's side of the family thinks the video games are from the devil and basically called me an idiot for playing them as a kid and said that I was letting the devil possess me and all that and just all this stupid stuff. Which I really don't understand how looking at pictures and pressing buttons is the tool of the devil. I don't really understand that, but that's what they always told me. And great, Kappa's poisoned. Um, that does that. And then my mom's side of the family thinks that video games besides Wii Fit are a waste of time and that you're just wasting your time staring at a screen and making yourself get fat and all that, but yeah. That's pretty much how my mom's side of the family is and how my dad's side of the family is. And I just, I really wish that I had a family that was that cool where they would even just give games a chance though, because my family won't even do that. God. But anyway, onto the third opponent here. They're against a Meryl. Uh, let's go ahead and use Bullet Seed. I never thought I'd be saying those words again, but... Bullet Seed is actually the superior move in this choice, in this, in this scenario, in this choice, this decision, this scenario. It took me three tries to get it right. And what do you know? Full health to death. Very nice. Well, full health to faint. Right, I can't say that. I'm talking about a localization company that censored out, I would kill for a sandwich. <laughs> so, uh, Shroomish is coming out next. Let's go to Moagami and just ember that thing. Don't want to physically attack it, obviously, because it affects Pork. I have to say, Shroomish is so awesome when you're using it, though, because everything gets hit by its effects for all the time. But when you're fighting against it, my god, do I hate this thing. All right, and that does it, level 26. And when is a cool tent going to level up? I swear, it's just never leveling up. Um... Let's go with Teddy. Teddy hasn't seen any action here, and Teddy has a really good move that gets the same type of attack bonus. I mean, when you think about it, having strength on Teddy this early on with how good his stats are, and then just on top of the fact that it's 80 power with same type attack bonus and 100 accuracy, I mean, that's 120 power that virtually never misses. That's amazing for this early in the game. All right, VV, we took you down. Go put on your mage robes and cry. Hey, her hair's blue. I guess that she's kind of in the spirit of it. How dare you make my granddaughter cry for that? I'm going to smack you! Prepare to lose! So we got Granny here, who is ferocious. 
Hey, I like how she has one Pokeball there and one Pokeball for real. And she has a level 18 Metatite. Yeah, this is a watered-down Brawly fight. <laughs> Let's start off with Fake Out. I know I'm going to get hurt by the poison, but oh well. You know, if I could do this without losing a single Pokemon, that'd be kind of nice. I, Well, I guess I do have Peck that I could attack with, though, but hey. Uh, we'll go with Ice Beam. I'm not going to get the same depth deck bonus. I'm not going to trust my luck with Bullet Seed. Oh, high jump kick! High jump kick! You know, that's why they call it high jump kick, because it's his foot saying hi to your face. And I know that Teddy probably wasn't the best decision, though, but... I just want to see if I can get experience on Teddy. If I can't, oh well, it's the last battle in this whole scenario that we have to do. And looks like I got it. Very nice. Okay, that does it. High jump kick is ridiculous. The thing is so powerful, though, but if it misses, you take so much damage. Uh, the, I mean, the user takes so much damage, though, so it's kind of a risky move. That is it. We're not in any hurry. Visit us a little bit. Okay, so let's go inside. Could you heal my poison off of my Pokemon? I mean, that's kind of severe that you've poisoned a creature. I'll tell you, my son is stronger than you. He even took the Pokemon League Challenge, I'll have you know. There's no question that you're strong, but if you were to battle my grandson, you'd end up crying in frustration. He's much stronger than any trainer or family knows. Challenging, he's probably must be challenging the Pokemon League champion by now. Knowing my grandson, he could be the champion already. We use this Macho Brace to more effectively strengthen our Pokemon in training. Since you've beaten all of us, this is a very good item. The Macho Brace cuts your speed in half, but remember those effort values I was telling you about? You get those from battling Pokemon in addition to using vitamins, and having a Macho Brace doubles how fast those go up. And am I not poisoned anymore? Did they automatically heal you after that? Because I swear I didn't hear the sound. Oh, never mind. I forgot, wow, I'm getting on them for poisoning my Pokemon, and I didn't even notice my own Pokemon's fainted. Alright, we're healed, and now that we're done with the Winstrate family, there's actually something else right here that is only in Emerald, Fire Red, and Leaf Green, Trainer Hill. So, I guess we could try this out. Uh, we haven't, I don't think I even showed this in Fire Red, I don't think I might have though, but let's see, you know, I always play something, maybe the first challenger ever, okay. So apparently they are not open yet. This is Trainer Hill, you may enjoy battles with many trainers. Unfortunately, we're still getting things ready. Please come back later. I'll be sure to show this later, similar to how I'm definitely going to show the battle tent here later when I'm level 30. So, I guess look forward to that if you really can think it's that special. Uh, anything here doesn't look like it. Anything over here? No, it doesn't quite look like it either. What about in this little crevice? No, nothing. Okay. So, because we have Rock Smash now and we have Mauville's Gym Badge, we can smash through these and... Boom shakalaka! This is something new! You can use Rock Smash to run into wild Pokemon. There's some Pokemon you can only find in this way, such as Nose Pass in uh, Granite Cave. We didn't have Rock Smash back then, so that's why I didn't go over it. And besides, we already did its bio during the Rock Sand fight, so I didn't really think it was too necessary. So, we'll just bullet seed this dude, I guess. Yo, dude! Okay. Wasn't expecting to run into a Pokemon there, that's why it kind of caught me off guard. Anything, anything, what do you got? If you don't raise your Pokemon some more, it'll be tough to keep winning up through the ranks. I've heard the Pokemon League's Elite Four strength. Why is everybody suddenly talking about the Elite Four? We're not even halfway through the game! Why is everyone suddenly obsessed with them? One indicator says, special attack, like a special defense, such special defense, okay, whatever. So, these two trainers right here, I want to battle them, because... Well, they're kind of major characters. Well, not really major characters, though, but they are recurring characters we'll keep running into. Oh, we've just stopped. We just spotted a tough looking trainer here of all places. Okay, roll camera. Let's get this interview. What'll happen is you'll battle them, and then you'll see your battle appear on TV later in the game, and just various things about the battle will appear on TV. It's not really too special, though, but, you know, I guess it's alright. I guess I do have kind of have. I guess I kind of have something that I could talk about here about Gabby and Ty. I don't know if you guys were familiar with the uh, tour that went through America. It was called Pokemon Rocks America. It was going, I think, through 2001 through 2005, I think it was. And it hasn't been going on since. They did the 10th anniversary party of the decade in quite a few cities, though, but not mine. I didn't get to go to that. But they had Pokemon Rocks America in my town once. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. It was really odd, though, because Phoenix was a big city, though. Nothing like that would ever happen in my town. And I was just so overjoyed when I heard that was going to be happening in our town. And there were these two people there, and it would be hilarious if they were watching my videos now, like, you know, seven years later. 
But there were these two people there that were with the convention that were basically Gabby and Ty. And it was just so cool because they were just so nice to my friends and I throughout the whole day. And they were just like some of the nicest people that I'd ever met that like had a job like that where they had to, you know, pretend to be a character. Like they had like a Nurse Joy and an Officer Jenny. And I guess they were kind of nice though, but none matched up to how nice Gabby and Ty were to my friends and I. And I remember that that day they gave me like so many freaking cards it was nuts like they were handing out booster packs and I remember like at the end of the day they had like tons of them left over and when I say tons I don't mean like 10 or so booster packs I'm talking like 40 booster packs that they gave me it was nuts and they gave some to my friends too just because we helped them out occasionally throughout the day whenever they asked for help like they needed somebody to go get something for them they'd usually ask us and find us and all that it was so cool and really was nice that there were people like that hired for such a thing like that. And it was just kind of a sentimental memory that I had with Gabby and Ty and why they're... I don't know. I guess it's just kind of a thing that I, happened to me as a kid that I really liked. And what was really cool was Ty actually had a camera. And I remember that like the video camera was fake though, but he was taking photos. And they ended up on the official Nintendo website. And for a little while, I actually had a picture on there, which was really cool. But anyway, we're interviewing all sorts of trainers. Would you give us a bit of your time for an interview? Sure, okay. And you describe your feelings about our battle, but it has to be short and sweet. Go! So we need to use the in-game vocabulary for this. Alright, I'm not going to show what I what it was that I chose out of all the words that I could have chosen for that, so I guess it'll be a surprise for whenever we see it on TV in the inevitable future. So, let's go through here. If I sneak past this trainer, great. If not, oh well, I'll probably just fight her. Okay, I snuck past her. Very nice. Okay. And yet another one. Uh, no! Okay, fine. I'm full of pep, and my Pokemon is Peppy too. Peppy Hair. If he's got hairy Pokemon, that would just be really, really odd. And you look much older in your sprite, Travis. I mean, really. You look so much older in that sprite. You look like a young adult. Now he's just like, hey, I'm five years old. I look like I'm really old. I don't know why I chose that voice or why I made that rhyme, but okay, I guess I kind of did. Um, on this route, though, I guess, something that I forgot in the last episode is there is actually a Pokemon we can find with the old rod only in Emerald and only one and, uh, only uh, about 30% of the time. That Pokemon is Goldeen. The original generic fish Pokemon Goldeen learns a lot of physical moves, and wouldn't you know it, it's meant to be a physical attacker. This doesn't work out too well for water types. When it evolves, it learns even more moves like that. It just doesn't have the best special attack, and being a physical water type isn't really beneficial until Diamond and Pearl, so... Not the best water type, though, but it is unique. And now, sorry about the cut there, though, but I wanted to use my repel really quick because we got some grass. We're now on Route 112, which has... Nummel, which is a fire and ground type. Really unique there. But, okay, I'm fighting, I guess. Nummel is really slow, but it's got really good type coverage. Fire and ground are both really good offensive types. It evolves into Camerupt, which isn't the most usable Pokemon in the world. In a later game, it gets an ability that is awesome, but unfortunately it doesn't have it here though, so it's not quite as awesome as it could be. But still, it's slow, and it does have a lot of weaknesses, but if it does get in an attack, it's going to hurt a lot because of just what kind of good moves it has access to. But that pretty much does it for that. We're going to go ahead and switch to Tentacool here. I keep saying their real name, like, half the time I say their real name, half the time I say their nickname. I need to just pick a name and stick with it. It's not that hard, Emil, really. Okay. So, Poison Sting. Alright, how come when they have a Lombre, they never have to worry about a thing? Really? Okay. Like, they always, like, never get, well, actually, no, I should, I should have used Acid there. Why did I misclick? Okay. Acid is clearly the stronger move, though. I was just hoping to get into Poison with Poison Sting. Oh, well. Too bad I didn't. God, that was just a kick in the face how the computer had a Lombre with Water Gun when I'm not going to get that for a really long time. Because I believe you can only get Water Gun through breeding uh, on Lombre at that low of a level. And that does it. Level 22. All righty. Oh, you are so strong. I know I am so strong. So... Over here, we have another battle. Okay, so here... Hey man, is our leader really gonna awaken that thing? Sounds like, yeah, but I heard we need a meteorite to do it. Oh, I get it now, that's why the rest of the crew went out to Fall Arbor. You got it, until they come back, we're not allowed to let anyone pass. Right, left! 
So they set up something about Fall Arbor Town, which is actually the next destination on our route. We uh, cannot go here to Lava Ridge Town quite yet, though, so Fall Arbor is going to be our next destination. And it sounds like something's happening there. And why do these things have green shadows on stone? I don't ever got that. Anyway, I was about to end the video, but I guess I'm not doing that. All right, so can you grab some bandages from my backpack? No, that's my Pokenav. Okay, fine, I'll register you. Ah, oh, God. Okay, so, I swear, something that I wanted to ask you guys, is it just me, or does the Pokedev look like a friggin' walkie-talkie? I mean, just look at it over there on the left. It looks like a walkie-talkie more than it looks like a cell phone. I mean, and that's another thing. Is it just me, or is the walkie-talkie, like, the stupidest name for anything ever? I'm gonna check my match call really quick. Like, I swear, it's like, I'm gonna call my partner on my walkie-talkie! I don't know, I just always thought it sounded really stupid, and unfortunately, I want that item! Why can't I hop more than one space? Uh, okay, I'm not getting that. Anyway, though. So, we have gotten here to the base of Mount Chimney. We are going to end this off here because we took down the Winstreet family, we had a bunch of battles, we found some new Pokémon, and... Well, we did a lot of stuff, okay? So, next time on Pokemon Emerald, we are going to be heading up to the Fiery Path to go through Mount Chimney and hopefully reach Fall Arbor Town, okay? See you guys then.